for mentioning the fact that I serve as a ranking member on the Crime, uh, Terrorism, Homeland uh, Security and Investigations. Uh, in that capacity, that committee certainly encounters not only our nation's law enforcement, but many of the issues dealing with terrorism, uh, including the work on Homeland Security. With that in mind, I want to simply say to my colleagues and certainly to my good friend who served and dedicated his life to the FBI for 14 years, none of us uh, who over the past couple of months will take a back seat to championing the FBI and thanking the FBI and recognizing the FBI uh, for the very valiant work that it does. Uh, being on the Judiciary Committee for the number of years that I've served, I've worked with almost every FBI uh, director uh, and agents, particularly the SACs in my particular jurisdiction, uh, and have been uh, engaged in discussions on the resources and needs of that organization. Again, we thank them for their service. I would offer to say uh, that the position I take now today is to protect the FBI and to protect the American people. With that in mind, I'd like to submit into the record, interestingly enough, an article written by Sheila Jackson Lee, Protecting America, uh, Protecting Americans, uh, dated uh, October 16, 2007, asked unanimous consent. Without objection. That, that article suggests that we have the responsibility to protect America and Americans. And I would make the point to my good friend who mentioned that men and women or families sending their young children, uh, young people over uh, to battlegrounds, they're absolutely right. And those young people that are going over to battlegrounds are going over on the basis of freedom. Their parents sacrifice the fact, these loved ones sacrifice their young people because they believe so much in the freedom of this nation. Well, I will tell you that the Section 702 and the underlying bill, there is no freedom in this particular bill. And that is why we need to address the question in a thoughtful manner. I don't mind if we extend this to have a longer debate so that we can uh, work through some of our concerns. Let me be clear that S-139 fails to address the core concern of members of Congress and the American public. The government's use of Section 702 information against the United States citizens in investigations that have nothing to do with national security. That is a crux of our advocacy for both the Amash Amendment joined by myself and Zoe Lofren and, and, and uh, uh, Ted Poe and many others, uh, it is not to undermine the security of this nation. It is to give substance to those families who sacrifice and send their young men and women to faraway places. The warrant requirement contained in the bill is riddled with loopholes and applies only to fully predicated official FBI investigations, not to the hundreds of thousands of searches that the FBI runs every day to run down a lead or check out a tip. S-139 exacerbates existing problems with Section 702 by codifying the so-called about collection, a type of surveillance that was shut down after it twice failed to meet the Fourth Amendment scrutiny. S-139 is universally opposed by technology companies, privacy and civil liberties groups across the political spectrum. Let me read briefly what the Amash Amendment really says. It is not something that would stop security, surveillance, and work in its tracks. What it does is, except as provided in subsection, subparagraph C or D, no officer, agent, or employee of the United States may conduct a query of information acquired under subsection A in an effort to find communications of or about a particular person if there's reason to believe such person is a United States person. Protecting the First Amendment of freedom of speech and all of that but match with the important amendment of the Fourth Amendment, which of course is unreasonable search and seizures. An application by the Attorney General to judge, to a judge of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court that describes the determination of the Attorney General that the is probable cause to believe that such communications provide evidence of a crime, such person is a foreign power or an agent of a foreign policy. This is a minimal standard. I yield the gentlelady an additional 30 seconds. Gentlelady is recognized. I thank the gentleman. This is a minimal standard of which every American should expect and is owed. It is a minimal standard upon which we stand the Constitution. We're missing what our role is here. It is not to rush through a Pfizer bill that has been delayed by my Republican friends. More importantly, it is to do right by the American people. We are not doing right by the American people. And I remember fighting against reverse targeting. 
a major issue in our work on the Freedom Act and the Patriot Act. Now today, in 2017, going into 2018, in 2018, it is important to remember that 9-11 was to not turn terror on Americans, it was to protect us from terrorism and to withstand that with the upholding of the Constitution. Time of the I ask my colleagues to oppose expired. the underlying Gentleman bill. Gentleman from Florida reserves his time. Gentleman from Georgia.